Hello and welcome to this session friends. My name is Yogesh. In this session we are going to discuss on basic Linux system administration skills for application team. Linux is the widely used platform uh, across all the domains. Uh, friends, uh, most of the companies are moving to DevOps culture where application support guy is also a performing system administration task. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, uh, what I felt uh, that application team can check a lot of things where they feel uh, they got limitations, but actually they can do a lot of system administration stuff, uh, which is at basic level, I can say, not advanced. So here I'm going to discuss a couple of points. So I have divided uh, it into user management, system management, package management and network management so you can see on my screen uh, my discussion will be on these points but not limited to I will be discussing a couple of other things which are interrelated so let's begin friends I have opened a putty session to one of Linux server so to start with the first thing if you have to check what's your user ID and uh, what's your user name so simply run id minus a it tells your uid is 504 your username app admin your primary group is 504 which is app admin and your secondary group 27 mysql in case you got multiple secondary groups they will be displayed or appended here next thing if you want to check who all users are logged on to the system so simply run w press enter it tells root logged in on pts slash zero and this is your user or you can run finger command it also tells same information and it tells from how long user is logged in from uh, how long he's not doing any activity means user is idle and from which terminal or which server he logged into this particular machine this is a server name okay now uh, if you have to check what's your password expiry settings to check that chh minus l your username it's app admin in this case so it tells when last time password was changed when password expired whether password inactive when it is uh, minimum number of days and uh, what's the maximum number of days we have to change password so everything is here so right now for this user password expiry is disabled it will expire after these many days and you know like that ages okay next thing how you can check what sudo privileges you got to do that sudo minus l here uh, my user is not having any sudo i know because i am admin so here like simply sorry this user may not run sudo command on this server so it means there are no sudo configured for this particular user now uh, if you have to check what are your u limit so mostly used u limits are no file and no and proc no file mean number of open files and proc mean number of processes for application to run it need uh, it need to fork processes and uh, open number of files so to check that u limit minus a it tells all the limits so the major as i said uh, that's a uh, max user processes on this for this particular user it's a uh, thousand and twenty four and open file limit is again thousand and twenty four if you have to modify it if you go try it you have to add entry in etc security limits dot com otherwise i believe uh, you have to engage your system admin if you have to check whether you go to cron tab access or not simply run cron tab minus c if it allows you to open a file it means you go to access if you don't have cron tab access it will complain you like your user is not having cron tab access so that was user management friends let's begin system management so first thing uh, you have if you have to identify what's your operating system name or type or what's a version you are running 
So simply then LSP underscore release followed by minus A. It tells your system operating system is CentOS and it's CentOS 6.8. Now if you have to check what's your hardware version, uh, generally it's difficult uh, to identify because it needs uh, access to certain commands like DMID code which a normal user can't run. But uh, if you got opportunity you can uh, grab DMI from uh, D message or like this way D message pipe grab DMI. So if you see it tells it's VMware, it's a VMware virtual machine. So uh, that's a way if D message got that output. Otherwise it's difficult uh, to get without uh, system admin. Okay. But uh, easily you can check whether your system is 32-bit uh, or 64-bit. If you see, it's x86 underscore 64. It means it's 64-bit capable system. Now, next thing, if you have to check uh, what's processor type and what's the processor speed and how many processors your system got. So simply cat or uh, do more on proc slash CPU info. If you see this is the processor 0, first processor, it's Intel Core i5, this is model and this is the speed 2.6 gigahertz. So this is the processor number 2, 0 is 1, 1 is 2, so it means this system got two processors, both of same speed. So in that way you can identify what processor you got, what speed and how many processors. Okay, next, if you have to check how much memory your system got and uh, what's the uh, utilization. So you can simply run free minus M. It tells, uh, that's in MB, if you want in uh, GB, free minus H. It tells uh, the system got 980 MB memory and 1 GB swap and this is the utilization, this is cached. If you want uh, more detailed information, you can always cat broke meminfo. So this tell very detailed information, like this is the memory in KB, this is the free memory, this is the cached memory. So all this information is captured from kernel, that's a, a live settings, live information. Okay, next thing, if you have to check uh, when your system was last rebooted, so you can run uptime command. If you see the system was rebooted uh, 3 hour and 40 minute, 41 minutes back. So uh, simply done uptime command. And uh, if you want to see uh, who or uh, who logged in into this system uh, last time, so last pipe it to more. So it tells uh, like these users logged in at this time, they logged in, this time they logged out. And uh, if any active user it will tell, even it will tell when system was rebooted on this event system was rebooted that's a date and that's a time so uh, that's very handy next thing if have, if you have to check what's a file system type when file system type information is required uh, let's say uh, you go to one server where you are not sure whether you got ext file system or xfs or uh, any other file system so you're getting some performance issue and you have to tell vendor you are using this file system. So in that case, simply then df minus t, press enter, sorry, df minus capital T. So it tells, this is the file system type, ext4, 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 this is temporary file system. If that's XFS, it will display XFS here. So that's a way to check file system type. And if you have to check uh, what are the mount options used uh, to mount a file system. So simply run mount minus a or mount. Here it is saying uh, only root can do. If you run mount, it uh, gives you information. So this file system, for example, uh, this one KVM, that's ext4, that's mounted read write. If you have uh, used any special option to mount, uh, let's say set UID, nodav, so it will be displayed here. Okay, right now it's without any option, default one, so it's not displayed. Now, uh, if you have to check uh, whether NTP is working or not, you know NTP is very critical thing. No need to wait for system admins to confirm. You can simply run NTP Q minus P 
press enter so if you see the star mark the star mark mean this ntp is in sync with this ntp this basically this ntp client is sync with ntp source which is this one in this case so it means we are good uh, next thing uh, if you have to check what's a time zone so simply run date command it tells uh, this is the time now and that's a time zone australian edt uh, for example if someone like you are working in a support model where some of your teams are working in different time zone if you have to perform some calculation like what's time in india or let's say what's time in us now so you can use different time zone converters here and that's online activity without any harm so let's say i want to con convert this aedt to utc time zone so you can run date command with minus minus utc whatever the time zone you prefer okay if you see that's a utc time now so that's very easy you can uh, convert the time actually time is not converted uh, on your system only you got time in utc so that's easy friends uh, and uh, i found uh, this very handy for in application configuration uh, where you want to see time uh, or you can set it in uh, your user profile for various users okay next thing if you have to check uh, what's a system page size page size is required uh, for memory pages because uh, that plays a critical factor on performance management on linux to get that get conf and uh, you can grep for or minus a pipe grep page size so if you see this page size that's a 4kb page so in that way you can get the page size next thing if you have to check system boot logs to check boot logs so basically this is the file and uh, all the users got access to read it cat where log boot dot log so like these are the boot logs when system started uh, what service was started so that is quite handy if you are running on amazon you don't have access to console and you want to check uh, during boot time what happened what was written on to console so you can cat this file immediately once system is booted uh, so that's a bit handy uh, next thing if you have to check whether any hardware failure on your system or not generally without root access you can't check but uh, there is a way if you run d message command uh, if anything getting failed uh, it will be written here in this output so run this command a uh, couple of times so if any failure is happening and this command is uh, again handy it tells it this server go two scuzzy drives sorry basically three and uh, this is the network interface type these are the file systems these are the two network NICs. it's zero it's one this is a speed uh, so that uh, gives a lot of other information and SC Linux is disabled if you see here or SC Linux you can check in another way SC status right now it's disabled if it's uh, enabled it will uh, tell whether it's in a permissive mode or targeted so it will give you con configuration okay so that was system management friends uh, now let's begin package management package mean uh, RPMs in Red Hat if you have to check what all RPMs installed you on the system rpm minus q a press enter it will give you a list of all rpms like these rpms are installed on system if you want uh, some in-depth detail for a rpm let's say this kernel header what is this rpm what it is doing when it was installed to get that information rpm minus q i v followed by rpm name press enter so it tells this is kernel header this is the version and this is the release this is on CentOS and uh, this is a signature and uh, this is a build date what this particular RPM function so all detail you will get next thing if you have to check uh, for one particular RPM let's say you want to check for bash RPM minus Q bash so it give you RPM no name no need to grab for all RPMs Okay, in case you have to check uh, what all files are delivered by this RPM. So to do that RPM minus QF followed by file. 
sorry rpm press enter so it is giving error so i did incorrect here you have to type l l mean uh, list all the files so these are the files which are delivered by this rpm now uh, if you have to check let's say uh, bash when you run bash so basically bash is a binary right that's a command which uh, which is a binary if you have to check uh, like from where it is getting called which bash okay this is the path and you have to check on which all libraries this particular command depend ldd is the command ldd followed by command press enter so these are the library requirements friends and this is very handy uh, because what happens when you install your application if any library is missing your application is not working it is complaining it may be getting fragment error or it may be getting some uh, termination message so always uh, run this command followed by your application path, binary path so if something is missing it will be displayed here so that's handy okay so now let's jump to network management friends uh, that's a very wide uh, area if i have to discuss there are thousands of things uh, but i'm just telling you basic things so let's say if you have to check uh, how many network cards you got on your system so simply run if config minus a so you got it zero and it's one you got two network cards lo mean loop back loop back mean uh, that's not physical that's virtual and uh, that's uh, not virtual that's logical basically that's the right word and this is the ip address on your it zero this is a network mask this is the broadcast address this is the mac address so this information is a bit handy and similar information for it one okay now next thing if you have to check uh, what's the network mtu size so same command mtu is this one for it zero it's 1500 mtu for it one is 1500 uh, mtu like uh, if you have heard jumbo frame jumbo frame mean mtu more than 9000 that's called jumbo frame jumbo frame mean uh, when data is transmitted over network uh, it is divided into the bigger frame uh, by default it's 1500 on red hat systems if you're running on amazon am at amazon 9001 is default next thing if you have to check uh, whether this particular nick is got active connection or not because friend if that's on vmware or amazon so that's obvious you got uh, on virtualization layer so underlying they got uh, multiple redundancies uh, redundancies but again if you have to check simply run its tool minus i minus i is for interface then interface name let's check for it one press enter so it tells uh, this is the driver it is using this is the version this is the firmware version supported speed and uh, this gives you little bit information about this one if you run without i it's tool followed by nick if it give you the speed detail like right now this is on uh, 1000 mbps and uh, duplex is full this is twisted pair so that's again handy information and it supports auto negotiation so next thing if you have to check uh, routing information because when troubleshooting connectivity issue let's say between your database and application so you have to check what's routing so simply the netstat minus nr it tells this is the router 0.0.0, .0 for all the networks they will be routed to this particular ip which is your gateway and uh, this is on it one so these are the routes for this particular network routed to zero if you got uh, multiple gateways so they can be defined there default will be one but uh, for one particular interface you can define multiple inter interface gateways so i believe uh, that uh, may help you friends uh, in case you have any query or any suggestion just leave a comment on my youtube channel thanks a lot friends bye bye